from Washington, this is VOA News. Coming up, the latest on political unrest in Egypt and encouraging women in Togo to take up art. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Norman. Egyptian police have fired tear gas in Cairo to break up street confrontations between supporters and opponents of ousted Islamist President Mohamed Morsi. Officials and witnesses said the unrest began Tuesday when hundreds of Morsi supporters marched on several ministries of the military-backed interim government installed after Egypt's military deposed Mr. Marcy, Morsi, that is, in early July. Morsi supporters like Mohammed Mansour said they intend to stay in the streets until Mr. Morsi is let out of detention and reinstated. Reports are circulating that militants killed dozens of people in northeastern Nigeria during the weekend, most of them praying at a mosque. Heather Murdoch reports now from Abuja. Locals say men in fatigues, but not Nigerian soldiers, attacked a mosque early Sunday in the town of Kanduga as people were praying. The reports say at least 44 people were killed. Locals say another attack in the village of Nagam killed at least 12. Officials confirmed the attacks happened outside of Maduguri, the original home of Boko Haram, but did not say how many people were killed. Borno state officials say the attack could have been intended to scare people who may have been sharing information with security forces. Boko Haram has been blamed for thousands of deaths since 2009 in attacks on the government, churches, schools, mosques, markets, international organizations, and media houses. Heather Murdoch for VOA News, Abuja. Nine South African policemen charged with the murder of a Mozambican taxi driver who was shackled to the back of a police vehicle and dragged to a nearby station were granted bail on Tuesday. Police officers pleaded not guilty to murder after footage captured on a mobile phone by an onlooker on February 26 and broadcast around the world by news channels. Police said they arrested taxi driver because his car was blocking traffic. The driver was found dead in a local police sale, cell that is several hours after his arrest. Jose Nascimento is a lawyer representing the taxi driver's family. The family will not be happy to know that uh, the accused have been released, but that's those are the rights of the accused to to uh, pursue bail, which they've done and they've succeeded. Incident rekindled images of apartheid-era police brutality and threw a harsh spotlight on police abuse in South Africa, where more than 1,000 detainees died in custody last year as a result of police action. In other news, Israel has freed 26 long-held Palestinian prisoners as a gesture hours before peace talks were to resume. Prisoners were loaded onto buses late Tuesday, brought home to the West Bank in Gaza, many of them jailed in the 1980s and 90s for killing Israelis and suspected Palestinian collaborators. Brazilian Foreign Minister Antonio Potrioto says the United States must stop practices that he says violate Brazil's sovereignty. Patriota met with U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry in Brasilia Tuesday to talk about the National Security Agency's surveillance of telephone and Internet traffic. Mr. Kerry said Brazil is owed answers and that he will get them. The first edition of the International Biannual Event on Female Art was recently held in Togo. It brought together female artists from across Africa, as well as China, the U.S., and Europe. Dubbed Women for Women, organizers sought to examine the role of women in African contemporary art, as well as provide a platform for artists to exchange ideas and nurture new talent. U.S. artist Martha Jarvis Jackson 
whose art focuses on issues of conservation and man's relationship to nature, said she was surprised at the level of talent in Togo. We worked beside the students, the young women here from Togo, and you know, talked about the work and um, discussed things that they could do to um, elevate their work and at the same time we were quite pleased to see how accomplished some of the women here in Togo were. Organizers said the event will help put a spotlight on the works of female artists. Billionaire and American TV personality Oprah Winfrey says she's sorry about the media frenzy that emerged after she said she experienced racism during a trip.